Scuttled by Christopher Millen. A Morky is not a big-headed alien from the planet Morcon. A Morky is not a carnivorous plant that only eats gummy bears. A Morky is not a type of modern dance or an appetizer smothered in gravy. A Morky is actually a dog that is part Maltese and part Yorkshire Terrier. Like this little guy. His name is Captain Sniffers. Captain Sniffers loves spending time with his two-legged family members, but he also loves it when they disappear for eight hours a day, five days a week. It is during this time that he slips out the bedroom window and goes down to the ocean where he keeps his boat. He calls his boat the SS Von Snuffington. It is named after Benedict Von Snuffington, the first Morky to fly around the world in a hot air balloon. To Captain Sniffers, the only thing better than captaining the SS Von Snuffington is a good scratch under the chin. Captain Sniffers woke up this morning to the sound of music coming out of a phone. It was a pleasant sound, like the sound stars might make when they twinkle. Captain Sniffers jumped up from his spot at the end of the bed and licked his two family members on their cheeks. In turn, they scratched his back and wished him a good morning, before leading him outside for a breath of fresh air and a morning pee. While Captain Sniffers ate breakfast, his two-legged family members disappeared. It had been two full days since he had last sailed, and though he'd missed his family members while they were gone, he was excited to get back on the ocean. He checked the house once more to make sure he was alone, and then he hopped up on the bedroom window ledge and nuzzled the window open just wide enough to slip himself through. It was a perfect day for sailing. There wasn't a cloud in the sky, and there was a light, warm breeze that tussled fallen leaves and whistled through tree branches. It was a big change from yesterday, which was stormy and cold. As Captain Sniffers ran down the sidewalk toward the ocean, he thought about all the things that make sailing so great. There's the smell of the ocean, salty and alive. There are whales breaching and seagulls laughing. But the greatest thing is seeing the curve of the earth way out on the horizon line. That curve reminds Captain Sniffers that the world isn't nearly as big as everyone says it is. The closer Captain Sniffers got to the ocean, the quicker his tail wagged. By the time he saw the ocean, his tail was wagging so fast, it was making a buzzing sound. Well, hey there, little fella, a passerby said. If that tail of yours wags any faster, you might just fly away. A flying dog. Now wouldn't that be a sight? The passerby had a good chuckle and passed on by Captain Sniffers. If Captain Sniffers could chuckle, he knows he probably would have chuckled at the thought of a flying dog, too. When Captain Sniffers reached the dock where he had moored the SS Von Snuffington only two days earlier, his little heart started to beat so fast and so loud it scared away the carpenter ants working on a plank at the end of the dock. The SS Von Snuffington was gone! Without a boat, a dog cannot be a captain. Without a boat, Captain Sniffers was simply Sniffers, and he wasn't happy about that either. As Sniffers sat on the dock, thinking about all the things that might have happened to the SS Von Snuffington, a scent caught his nose. It was the smell of the wood used in the railings on his boat. He put his nose in the air and sniffed, sniffed, sniffed. The SS Von Snuffington was out there, and he was going to find it. Sniffers scuttled off the dock and along the beach, hopping over crabs carrying their homes on their backs and logs shaped like marvelous creatures from other worlds. The smell was getting stronger, but his boat was nowhere to be seen. He reached a lamppost and the smell was so strong, it was like he was standing on the deck of the SS Von Snuffington. Perhaps he'd been looking in the wrong direction the whole time. He looked up, up, up. But to his disappointment, all he saw was a pair of crows perched on the curve of the lamppost. Hey, crows, Sniffer growled. My boat, the SS Von Snuffington, is missing, and I think you know where it might be. The crows looked down at Sniffers, cawed and flew off. Sniffers didn't speak crow, but he knew they knew something about where his boat was, so he chased after them. As Sniffers ran along the beach, following the shadows of the two crows flying high up above him, he thought about what the passerby had said earlier. If that tail of yours wags any faster, you might fly away. Flying would make his chase so much easier, so he wagged his tail faster than he had ever wagged it before. He wagged it so fast, it buzzed. He wagged it so fast, it went invisible, but it did not lift him off the ground. Sniffer spent so much time trying to fly, he didn't realize where the crows were leading him. There is one thing that will make a dog forget all its worries. Squirrels. 
When a dog sees a squirrel, everything that was once important to a dog gets pushed aside and all that dog can think about is chasing the squirrel. Sniffer saw a squirrel out of the corner of his eye and suddenly following the two crows became unimportant. But it wasn't just the sight of the squirrel that made Sniffer stop chasing the crows. It was what the squirrel was carrying. In its furry paws it held several nuts, but not the kind of nuts you eat. The squirrel was carrying big, shiny nuts used with bolts to fasten things together. And some of these nuts had S.S. Von Snuffington stamped into them. Hey, squirrel! Sniffers growled as he charged at the squirrel. My boat, the S.S. Von Snuffington, is missing, and I think you know where it might be. The squirrel was so weighed down by the nuts it was carrying, it didn't scamper off in fear as most squirrels do when a dog starts chasing them. Instead, it made a skew, skew, muck, muck sound and slowly waddled away. Sniffers didn't speak squirrel, but he knew the rodent knew something about where his boat was, so he followed him. As Sniffers and the squirrel moved slowly along the beach, Sniffers wished he could speed things up. The sun was moving across the sky faster than they were moving, and he knew that when it reached a certain point, he'd have to go home. He had to be there when his two-legged family members got home, or they'd think something bad had happened, and they'd be sad. Sniffers didn't want anyone else to be sad today. What to do, he thought. What to do. He was so busy thinking about jetpacks and squirrels riding on the backs of Morkies that he didn't notice where the squirrel was leading him. A squirrel is a powerful distraction to a dog, but there is one thing that is even more distracting to a dog searching for his boat. As Sniffers slowly followed behind the squirrel, he spotted an otter out of the corner of his eye. It was bobbing up and down in the ocean. Normally, an otter wouldn't make Sniffers stop following a squirrel, but this otter was wearing a red life jacket, and the words S.S. Von Snuffington were stamped on the back of it. Hey, otter, Sniffers growled as he rushed to the shoreline. My boat, the S.S. Von Snuffington, is missing, and I think you know where it might be. The otter said, yee, yee, whistle, whistle, and swam off. Sniffers didn't speak otter, but he knew the otter knew something about where his boat was, so he ran along the water's edge, never taking his eye off the red life jacket. As the otter led Sniffers up onto a dock, Sniffers finally noticed where he was heading. Hey, otter, he growled. This is where my boat was, not where my boat is. Sniffers stamped his feet and yipped, as small dogs do when they are upset and can't understand what otters or squirrels or crows are saying. Sadness set in once again. I just want to know what happened to my boat, Sniffers yipped. The otter put one of his paws on Sniffers' back and gently pushed him toward the edge of the dock. Sniffers looked out over the edge of the dock and down into the water, and that's when he finally found the S.S. Von Snuffington. The S.S. Von Snuffington was lying on the ocean floor. Oh no, oh no, Sniffers barked. The S.S. Von Snuffington has been scuttled, sunk, destroyed. I'll never be a captain again. The otter shook his head in sympathy for the sad little dog and leapt back into the ocean. Sniffers flattened himself on the dock and looked down at his sunken boat. Little tears dripped from his eyes into the ocean. He had been sad when the boat was lost, but with something lost, there is always hope it will be found. Now that he knew his boat was gone for good, he was sadder than he had ever been. The only joy he was going to get out of the SS Von Snuffington was from the memories he had of sailing it. But what joyous memories those were! And the longer he lay there, the more those memories made him feel better. He remembered the time a whale mistook the S.S. Von Snuffington for a snack and swallowed the boat with him on it. Sniffers tickled the whale's rib and made the whale laugh so hard he spit the boat out. The whale was very sorry once he realized what he had done. While Sniffers was remembering all the good times, the two crows he had followed earlier landed on the dock next to him. They looked down at the sunken boat and cawed. As they cawed, the squirrel Sniffers had followed earlier appeared next to the crows. He looked down at the sunken boat and said, Muck, muck, sue, sue. The otter heard the racket and popped out of the water. He whistled and chirped, and then he swam off to a seagull that was standing on a piece of driftwood. The otter's paws moved back and forth and pointed to the sky and smacked against the water. The otter sunk down under the water, then floated back up to the surface. The otter was talking to the seagull using actions instead of words. When the otter stopped moving, the seagull flew off. A few minutes later, a flock of seagulls appeared. They had ropes and pulleys, which they dropped into the water where a family of otters now bobbed up and down. Some of the otters attached the pulleys to the dock, while the other otters wrapped the ropes around the sunken S.S. Von Snuffington. When the ropes were secure, the flock of seagulls pulled the ropes from the air, and the otters pulled the ropes from the dock. 
The boat shifted, but it did not rise. Sniffers, the crows, and the squirrel couldn't believe what they were seeing. They all grabbed a rope and began to pull with the otters. The boat shifted again, but it was too heavy. They needed something stronger to help them. They needed something with whale-like strength. And just when that thought crossed their minds, a whale breached and crashed back down into the ocean. The whale appeared again, this time near the dock. Sniffers recognized it as the whale that tried to eat him, but he could also tell the whale was there to help. When the whale dipped back under the water, they all began pulling again. The boat shifted and the whale slid its head under the boat's bow. Then the whale wriggled and squiggled and slid its body under the whole boat. Finally, the boat began to rise. A morky, two crows, a flock of seagulls, a family of otters, a squirrel, and a whale all worked together, and within minutes, the SS von Snuffington was back on top of the water instead of deep underneath it. It was a hole in the starboard side of the boat that had sunk the SS von Snuffington. The boat must have smashed into the dock during last night's storm, Sniffers thought. The whale kept the boat from sinking again, but the whale couldn't stay underneath it forever. All the creatures around the boat offered their opinion as to what to do, but because they all spoke different languages, it was just noise. The carpenter ants working on the dock stopped working because of all that noise. They couldn't understand what everyone was blabbering on about, but they knew it had something to do with the hole in the boat on the whale's back, and they knew they could fix it. If they fixed it, maybe everyone would stop making so much noise, and they could get back to working on the dock. The ants set to work. They nibbled and chewed and moved a piece of wood from a place it wasn't needed to the hole. Stiffer saw the wood moving across the deck of the SS von Snuffington and started barking. Look, look, he barked. The crows, the seagulls, the otters, the whale, and the squirrel stopped talking. They all watched in silence as the ants filled the hole and worked as a team to fix the damaged SS von Snuffington. When they were done, they jumped back into the water and swam back to the dock where they resumed working on a cracked plank. The whale swam out from under the boat, and everyone held their breath. The boat rocked and bobbed on the ocean surface, but it did not sink again. Everyone cheered, but it was Sniffers who cheered the loudest, because he was a captain again, and he couldn't have been happier. Thank you, he barked. Thank you so much. He retrieved his captain's hat, which was wet, but still in one piece. It's finally time to set sail, he said. He was about to raise his sail and take the boat out onto the ocean, when he noticed the position of the sun. His journey to find his boat had taken the whole day. His two-legged family members would be home in minutes. Captain Sniffers would have to set sail another time. Captain Sniffers tied the SS von Snuffington to the dock and said, I will return tomorrow, and you're all welcome to set sail with me, even you, Mr. Whale. You can swim along beside us and join in on our day of celebration. The creatures could tell the Morky was happy, and that made them happy. They all cheered again, and then they scattered. Before the SS von Snuffington had sunk, Captain Sniffers only dreamed about making an impact on the world. Now he knew that even the smallest acts leave a lasting effect, and that a tiny Morky can make a big difference. When all the animals were gone, Captain Sniffers looked at his boat one last time and said, See you tomorrow. He scuttled off the dock and ran home barking with joy the whole way. The end.